What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment and today I'm out here on the lot of our Western Equipment location in Amarillo, Texas and I'm going to be telling you all about this John Deere X370. First, let's talk about model numbers. So this is something that is highly important because it can be very confusing when we're talking about the different models in these different lineups. So on this X370, first we are going to have the X. So this is going to mean that this is in the X series of mowers. Now within the John Deere tractor style mowers, you're going to have S series that have an S100 and an S200. Then you're gonna have the X series mowers, which are going to have your X 300s, X 500s, and X 700s. So the X is gonna be the more upscale line. These are gonna be the mowers that you have to find in the dealerships, whereas the S series mowers you can find in the dealerships as well as some of your big box stores. So next will be the three. This is going to be our series indicator. So right there, like I said, we're in the X 300 series. Now, like I said, we do have the fives and the sevens above that. And then next we're going to have our seven here. This is what we like to call kind of our model indicator number. This is gonna indicate some of the features and functions that this machine has. And then our last digit here is a zero. And what you'll see within the X series is you will see either a zero or a four at the end here. And a zero is gonna indicate that this is a two wheel steer and a four will indicate that it is a four wheel steer. Next we'll go ahead and get underneath the hood here. First thing I'd like to point out is just how easy it is to lift that hood up, get underneath the hood. That way we can get underneath here to all of our service points. Now, like I said, we're out here in Amarillo, Texas. It's been super dry and dusty. So I apologize for the dirt and grime you're gonna see under here, but so let's get to talking about this engine. What we're gonna have here is a 21 and a half horse Kawasaki engine. Now what you'll see right here on top is that it says it's a 21 and a half horse John Deere engine, but if we go ahead and look right over here on the side, you will see that it does have the Kawasaki sticker here that's going to have that engine serial number and identify it as a Kawasaki. So 21 and a half horse. Now, one thing other about this cover right here that shows where your 21 and a half horse is, is that this is also going to be our air filter cover. So once we raise this up, we have access to our air filter. So very simple just to raise that out take the clamp off and change out your filter. Now, next, what we're gonna have is over here on the left-hand side is where we're gonna have all of our oil change and oil checking components. So right here, we're going to have our dipstick. So if we simply untwist this and pull that out, we will have our dipstick. And this is also going to be where we fill our engine oil. Right below that, we're going to have our oil filter. And right below that is gonna be our toolless oil drain system right here. So we can simply just take this cap off by hand, drain our oil, then whenever it's done, go ahead and screw that back in and proceed with our oil change. Now, a few other service points, we move around here to the front of the engine. We're going to have one spark plug here, and this is going to be a V-twin engine, meaning it does have two cylinders. So then you will have another spark plug right over here. Now, over on the right-hand side is where we're gonna have more of our fuel elements. So one thing I always like to point out is the fuel pump right here. This can be a problem sometimes if we're having trouble starting, we're having those fuel issues. This is a really easy part to change out and it's very easy to get to. And then right back behind, we're going to have our fuel filter right down here also easy to get to. Sometimes it's gonna be zip tied in as we see right here, but you can easily cut that, get that loose to be able to change out this fuel filter. And then right above that, we're going to have our battery. Once again, very easy to get to, easy to service if we need to. And then while we're talking about all of these different service points, one other thing to keep in mind is that right here on the hood, as soon as you raise it up, you are going to have your service interval chart. This is gonna tell you when to do those certain services, when to change the oil, the spark plugs, when to check tire pressures. It's also going to have some other things here that are gonna give you important parts or points here on the mower that you can reference. So just make sure that you know where that's at. Now let's go ahead and talk about the operator station. But before I get onto the mower, one thing I do wanna talk about is going to be the 
18 inch high back cut and sewn seat. So what you'll see here is a very nice design cut and sewn leather pattern here on the seat. Now, one nice thing about this type of seat is that the cover can be removable here. So you have a couple of straps on each side that you can simply undo and change out this cover if you happen to have some wear or tear damage on it. Now, you're also going to see over here on each side, three sets of holes here. This is going to be made into the cover and into the seat so that you can add optional armrests to this seat. And then once we flip this up, you'll also notice right here, we do have a dual spring suspension and that they are adjustable here. So we can move these springs either more towards the front, more towards the middle, or more towards the rear, depending on the type of ride that we're looking to get. And then also underneath here, we are going to have our deck leveling tools. So you'll have your tool right on board here to be able to level that deck along with your gauge as well. Now make sure to check on our other channel 24 seven parts to be able to see how to use these tools as I have many videos on there showing that on this X300 series. Now we'll go ahead and jump onto the mower here and go over our controls. Now, I normally start over here on the left-hand side, and usually the first thing I talk about is the raise and lower of the deck, which usually has a foot pedal here. Now, on this particular mower, this is actually going to be a hydraulic lift. So if I go ahead and I start the mower up here, or at least get this in the on position, then we'll go ahead and start the mower up. <laughs> just like that. And then once the mower is started, I've actuated that hydraulic system. Now I can reach over here to the left-hand side to this lever and I can raise this up and you'll see the deck go up there. And then if I push it down, you'll see that deck lower down. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise it all the way up, change my height of cut right down here below my legs, right here on the floor. This is gonna go from one inch all the way up to four inch in quarter inch increments. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down to one and a half inches here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push down on my lever. And you'll see that deck slowly go down until it stops. And then if I want to raise that back up, I simply grab here and that will leave this in transport mode once you raise that all the way up. Now moving up here on our dash, going over most of our main controls, right here on the left-hand side, we are going to have our throttle, and then we are going to have a spring-assisted choke here. So you'll notice that if I push up and let off, then that choke will come back down to the rested position. It will not get stuck up in choke. Now when I move down, I have this yellow button here. Now this is not indicated anywhere on the dash what this is, but this is gonna be our RIO button, which is our rear implement option button which this is basically gonna be a safety switch that you have to push in. If you have your blades engaged and want to go in reverse, you'll have to push this in first, go in reverse, and then you can release this button and continue in that rear descent, leaving those blades on. Now, if we try to go in reverse with the blades on and we do not push this button, it will kill the deck. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. I'll go ahead and turn the mower back on here. <laughs> Make sure I have my deck all the way up. I'll go ahead and turn those blades on. Now from right here with the blades on, I can go forward. And then if I try to go backwards, you'll hear right there that it turns the deck off. And now to re-engage that deck, I'd have to push my button in and then pull it back out here. That'll turn those blades on. Now, if I want to go in reverse, I would push down on my yellow button here, and then I can start reverse and it'll stay. Then I can go in forward, push down my button again to go in reverse, and then go back and forward. So there is a demonstration of the RIO button and how it functions. Now, if we move over here to the right, we are going to have our key switch that you see here. This is going to have a lights position and then our on position, and then of course our start position all the way over to the right. And then next below that, we are going to have our PTO engagement or our blade engagement to turn the blades on. We're simply gonna pull up. And then to disengage, we're simply gonna push down. And then below that, we are gonna have our cruise control button that's gonna function just like it would on your car once you get to that speed that you wanna be at. We're making those long passes or those long circles. You can go ahead and go to that speed, push this button in, and that's going to lock in that hydrostatic transmission in that speed that you're at. 
you can just continue to drive. And then right below that is going to be our parking lever. Now this is going to work alongside with our parking pedal over here on the right hand side. So to engage this parking brake, I'm gonna have to push in on my pedal raise up on my parking brake and then that sets the parking brake and then to release it i'm just going to do the opposite thing i'm going to push in on the parking brake down on the lever and that is going to release the parking brake now we talked a little bit about our deck position setting but it is right here in between my feet like i said you're also going to have a bunch of different information here on this sticker and then also right down here in between your legs you are going to have a seat adjustment so you're going to have a silver lever here that you can push in that's going to allow this seat to scoot forward and you can also go backwards that way you can add to the comfortability of this ride and be able to fit multiple different operators now also over here on the right is where we're going to have our twin touch pedal system you'll see very clearly that we have a forward and reverse so right here to operate this mower you have a forward pedal and a reverse pedal to easily operate this mower and then lastly over here on my far right on the fender i am going to have a cup holder and a covered storage box here it's going to be great for putting your keys in maybe your cell phone your wallet all those different things that you're going to be keeping on board with you now before we hop off let's just go over a few things here on the instrument cluster so what we have here that's going to always show up is going to be our rpm gauge over here on the left hand side this is going to tell us when we are at the speed that we need to be to be cutting so to get there we would raise up our throttle that would send the bars up into the green here and then we know we're ready to cut we are also going to have our fuel gauge right here in the middle very easy to see if we put on our parking brake you are going to see a parking brake symbol there we're going to have a battery meter over here and then also our hour meter down here in the bottom right and then above that we are going to have our warning lights up here in the top so if we have anything going wrong whenever we're mowing you will have that warning light indicator right here at the top so at the rear of the mower here first thing i'd point out is where our fuel opening is going to be located this is going to have a large three inch opening with a tethered lid so whenever we take that off we're not going to lose that lid and then we also have that wide opening making it very easy to get those gas cans in different ways of getting fuel into that mower now we're also going to have a 3.3 gallon tank on these mowers and usually by rule of thumb what we like to see is a gallon an hour on fuel sometimes you'll get more sometimes you'll get less depending on the type of grass and the cutting conditions but that is something that you can try to gauge to see how your mower is doing with the fuel now also here at the back we're going to have a couple of important things first being the transaxle so this is going to be our transmission on this mower and on this mower we're going to have the k57 tough torque transmission now the nice thing about this is, is that it does have a replaceable filter but it is internal so you are going to have to get into this transaxle to change out this filter which sometimes can be a tough job but you'll also notice that on this mower in particular we are going to have this hydraulic reservoir here and the reason being is, is that this mower does have that hydraulic lift on the deck but it also is going to have hydraulic power steering at the front which makes this thing drive like a dream feels almost just like an automobile and i'll show that a little more here in a minute but you are going to have this tank that you're going to need to check make sure that your fluid is full and accurate now also here at the back we are going to have a tow hitch we're going to see a few different cutouts here in this rear frame and this is going to make this mower able to carry different attachments that may attach back here and then we're also going to have our transaxle disengage lever so whenever we have this pushed in it means that our transaxle is in, is engaged and we're ready to drive but if we were to get in some of those sticky situations or happen to have a breakdown or the mower happens to quit on us we do have this lever here that we can pull out to disengage that transaxle then we can release our parking brake and then we'll be able to push this mower out of the way if we needed to next let's talk about our mower deck here and what we're going to have on the x370 is going to be the 42 inch xl deep now the 42 inch is going to be the only option that you can get on the x370 but if we move into those lower mowers into the x350 series or even up into the x380 then we're able to get some different options here on the deck but what we have like i said is a 42 inch xl deep this is going to be a 12 gauge stamped steel deck here we are going to have the flip up spindle covers here we are going to have a washout port we're going to have our anti-scalping wheels here that are adjustable so these can be adjustable depending on what height you're cutting at 
you can see stamped right in here to the side that right now we're set to be cutting at one to one and a half inches. If we move down, we're at one and a half to two inches. The next notch is two to three, and then the bottom notch is for three to four. Now you're gonna have one of these anti-scalping wheels on this side, as well as on the other side over there. Now with a 42 inch deck, this is only gonna be a two blade mower. So you're only gonna have two spindles to take care of, but you'll also see another flip up spindle cover over on the other side. Now, a couple of things I like to point out about these spindle covers is they do give a little bit of information. So right here on top, it's gonna tell you to use air, not water. And that is going to be the preferred method of cleaning these decks because the less water we can get on these decks, the less moisture we get and the less buildup that we have. So make sure that we're using either that air hose or that leaf blower to go ahead and blow these decks off and avoid water as much as possible. Now, the question that I always get is, well, if that's the case, then why do we have a water washout port here on top? And that's because a lot of times for cleaning the underside of this deck, we do need that water along with the blades to be able to churn that up and to be able to suck that water off of either a concrete or asphalt surface to get a good clean underside of our deck. And then I always suggest to go ahead and take that water off, leave your mower blades running and to dry out the underside of that deck. Now, one good thing about the stamped steel decks is that you are not going to have those fabricated corners. So cleanup is not gonna be as hard as it would be on a deck that is cut and welded because you're gonna have all rounded edges here and that's going to decrease the amount of buildup, which is gonna decrease the amount of rust, which is gonna decrease the chance of wear and breaking of this deck. And then also it's gonna increase the amount of airflow that you're gonna get under there, which is going to help in dispersing material and process material and sending it out the other side. Now is when I like to talk about some things that would often get overlooked or maybe not talked about whenever you were going out and purchasing this mower. And first thing is going to be the frame. So what you're going to have here is a solid welded steel frame. So if you were to take everything off of this mower, what you would see is a full welded frame from the front to the rear. Whereas a lot of mowers in this size and in this category are gonna have bolted together frames. So what you're getting there is just a lot more stability, a lot more peace of mind knowing that you're sitting on a full welded frame instead of something that could have a bolt break or a bolt come loose and then possibly have frame issues. Now, as far as greasing service points on this mower, you are going to have five main grease points. Three of them are going to be here on the front axle, one on each of our spindles where our wheel spindle comes in to the front axle, one right in the center of our axle where that axle has the pivot, and then we're going to have one on each spindle of our mower deck. So five main grease points there. Now, like I talked about, this mower is going to be the power steering model. So you will have a power steering cylinder right here in the middle, and that is going to be serviced from that reservoir. That's where it's gonna get its hydraulic fluid. So just know, like we said, at the rear of the machine that it is important that we're making sure watching that. But then we also need to be making sure and checking our hose connections here on our cylinder to make sure that we're not leaking any of that fluid, that we're not losing that power steering. Now, also, since we're talking about power steering, talking about the driving function, one thing that doesn't get talked about a lot is going to be tire sizes. So what we have here on the front is gonna be a 15 by six dash six here at the front. And then at the rear, we've got a 20 by 10 dash eight. So you do have a substantial set of tires on here. They are going to be the turf tire pattern. So they're going to be easy on the yard. They are pneumatic. So you're able to blow those up. Um, a lot of thing, a lot of times guys will go through and they will put a tire sealant in this whenever they first get them just to help and prevent from losing out on runtime by having those flat tires. So if you're looking for a good tire sealant option, make sure to go check out our video on our other channel, 24 seven parts, where I talk about the ice seal tire sealant. So to wrap it all up, let's go over some specs and dimensions. First, we'll start with the height of the mower. So at the tallest point, we're gonna be 49.4 inches there at the top of the seat. When we're talking length, we're looking at 71 and a half inches in total length from front bumper to the back. With, with the mower deck on and the discharge chute down, we're looking at right around 53 inches wide. And then as far as weight goes, we're looking at 570 pounds. Now, as far as some other specs go that we're looking at, towing capacity on this mower is gonna be at 600 pounds. So we can pull up to 600 pounds at the rear of this mower. And then as far as speeds go, we're looking at 5.8 
mile an hour going forward and 3.5 mile an hour going in reverse. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you're looking for any John Deere parts, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.